A little five-star rewind. Let's hit it. Go ahead, Pete. Time to buckle in. Hey, baby, let's go out there like a bunch of crazy dogs. That's some fun. It's time for five-star rewind. <laughs> Hello? Tiki and Tierney's top five games from this past weekend. I'm just about that action, boss. Here we come. It's a man's game now. I mean, I should have said this before. but I, I got to laugh, though. It's like we got to watch Ray Lewis on TV every week. Lord knows what the hell he got away with. And we got to watch Greg Hardy play every Sunday? Man, oh, man. All righty, first up, Tiki, we start on the big stage. Sunday night, Carolina keeps rolling, even if it wasn't that pretty. Tight splits, eye backs. Fake to Stewart. Tolbert's open right flat. Makes the catch. Gets hit. Keeps his balance. Fighting at the three. The two. The one. Right pylon. Did he get in yet? Touchdown. Go dance a Go dance a That's how you do your thing. Okay. That's how it sounded. Uh, the score was 21-6 on that touchdown. Final score, 27-16. So Chip Kelly's offense, which was once revered and innovative and brilliant, still scuffling, Teak. Yeah, those who didn't know what Eugene Robinson from the Panthers Radio Network was saying, he I was think saying, partner knew what he he was saying go dancing man, go dancing man. If what? you look at Mike Tolbert after he scored that touchdown, he's doing some dance and uh you know, whatever. He's one of those things they do in the club. Mm -hmm. Find me at the club. But this Bada is all. You'll be troubled by the three interceptions if you just look at the stats from Cam Newton. But two of those were tips that should have been caught. Uh, but what was more important is that when this team needed to win, and they always rely on Cam when they need to win, he gets it done, especially uh, in, in the tight red zone. But more importantly, this defense with Kawan Short and Josh Norman at the corners who were playing fantastic. Luke Keekley, uh, who is just, a, is just a man as long as he can stay unconcussed. And Jared Allen. Allen. Remember Jared Allen? They brought him over in that trade uh, from Chicago Bears. Came up with some big sacks on Sam Bradford. They left him to 102 yards passing on the day. This Eagles team, they got to get Ryan Matthews more involved. They want to hand the ball to DeMarco Moore. Ryan Matthews fits this offense better. You hear it first. Uh, Jonathan Stewart, a buck 25 on the ground for Carolina. Mark of a good team. Win when you don't have your A game. I mean, Tiki's right. Couple of picks, deflections, three and all. Uh, Cam wasn't great, but he was good enough to move to 6-0, and although both quarterback ratings not pretty Bradford checking in 58.7 Cam Newton 59.2 Carolina 6 and 0 and the birds at 3 and 4 meanwhile in New England the Jets stand in toe to toe before the Pats the big bad Pats found the biggest of them all an empty set two receivers right trips left Brady takes the snap he finds Gronkowski with a really Woo! open at the 10 to the 5 into the end zone touchdown Patriots they cover him all day long. And when it's most dire for the Jets and you go zero blitz coverage, the problem is you forgot to cover one guy, and that's number 87. Well, I'll let you hit the technical stuff. I'm not so sure if they forgot. I think it was actually kind of the plan. And if you if you saw the play, Gronk sold yep. it nicely on the on the block there. Sochi, Zolak on the call. Good game, tight game. Jets hung around. Pat still better. Yeah, Zolak should know this one. He'll, he'll see it in retrospect. But this was just better game planning by the Patriots coaches, not over the Jets coaches, but over the Jets players. It was cover zero. He was right. Nobody in the middle of the field, man to man. But it was a green dog. Meaning the safety, if the tight end blocks, his job is to blitz the quarterback. Rob Gronkowski deked him, got out, wide open touchdown. The Patriots scored when they had to down the stretch, scoring two touchdowns. They got really close at the end for the Jets with the onside kick. But the Jets proved they belong. I mean, the Jets are the, the Patriots are still who they are. Mm -hmm. The Jets are closing that gap. The problem is when they meet them again, it's at the end of the season. The division may already be decided. And that is true. Tom Brady threw it 54 times complete. I didn't even try to run the ball, and he was still. I mean, Brady's just unbelievable. Uh, Fitzpatrick, couple of good plays, couple of gaffes there by Brandon Marshall. He dropped the touchdown. But you have it now. Jets 4-2. and two, Pat 6-0. and oh. Big one for the Jets coming up. They played the Raiders uh, yeah. Sunday in Oakland. That is that should be pretty the fun. only knock I can have on the Jets defense. Yep. Third and long conversions. There were four of them. The Patriots were four and four. And the Jets were number one coming in, You're which right. tells you the Pats are just certainly above the mean, and that's why they are the Pats. Yep. Mention the Raiders. How about this? In Southern California, forget the final score. This one was a Rowski all Raiders as Carr connects with Coop. Carr done. Now a three by one formation. Three left. They throw to the three side. Bubble screen to Cooper. A block from Penn. 40, 30, 20, 15. Cuts inside. 10, 5, touchdown. Wait for it. Go get him, Pops. Nah, it still has the nice pipes. My man Greg Poppin doing it on the radio's uh, Raiders Radio Network 95.7. The game out there in 
Northern California. Now the Chargers, well, they're kind of aren't they are two and five, but we all know the needle's pointing up for the Raiders, who look pretty good. They led 30 to six at the half. Yeah. It was a wax job. Forget yeah. the final score. Yeah, you're right. You look at the final score and you say, oh, this is an eight point game. Uh, Phillip Rivers, who is going to lead the league in all the statistics that you can ask for for a quarterback, can't do it on his own. Throwing the ball 58 times on the day. He's going to throw touchdowns, but he's also going to throw interceptions. You can't win that way. But on the other side, Amari Cooper is just a man. He is the rookie of the year right now. All due respect to Todd Gurley, who's been balling for the Rams. But open field running, catching balls, running routes, he does it all. More importantly for this Raiders team, their first seven possessions they scored on, four touchdowns, three field goals, as BT said, 37 to 6. At one point in the third quarter, they controlled this game from the beginning and just kind of petered it out for the end. Beat the Raiders and put themselves in position, beat the, the Chargers and put themselves in position to continue to grow in the AFC West. Yeah, we had Chris Sims on the show. I think he was out September 28th, 29th, late September. And he said back then, after only a couple of games, that he was absolutely already one of the top wideouts in the NFL. Looks like a guy probably nailed it. Meanwhile, moving on, the Giants didn't get a whole lot from Eli, but... Everybody else chip it in. How about Dwayne Harris, a special team C-note? End over end kick. Comes down to Harris with the goal and it'll run it out to the 10. He's to the 15, cuts right to the 20. He's to the 30, breaks right to the 40. Dwayne Harris across midfield. It's a foot race. 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Giants. The former Cowboy goes 101 yards to break the tie. That's how it sounded. Bob Papa doing it on the Giants radio network, and that uh, made it 27-20. It broke the uh, it broke the tie, as Papa said. And with all the nonsense with Hardy and Jones and, and the head coach backing them up, let's not forget, vital win for your big blow there yeah. as they uh, suddenly stand atop the <laughs> NFC East. I know. It's like a roller coaster with this New York Giants team, 4-3 and three, uh, on the season. They are on top of the NFC East. Uh, Dominique Rogers cromartie also had a pick six, so it was the special teams and defensive scores that got the Giants the lead and ultimately the win here. I got to tell you, I don't know what's up with the game planning of the Dallas Cowboys. They ran for 233 yards, and Darren McFadden, yeah, that Darren McFadden, 152 yards at 5.2 per a clip and a touchdown, and they wanted to throw the ball with Matt Castle. He throws three interceptions on the day. As, until Tony Romo comes back, I feel like this Cowboys team has zero chance. They're 0-4, as I said, without Tony Romo. They're treading water, at least trying to, but they have the Seahawks next, the Eagles, the Bucks, mm. who surprisingly can score a lot of points, yep. and the Dolphins before before Tony Romo potentially is coming back, they might go 0-4 in their next four. Nah, they'll get at least one. But hope, a revitalized I, Dolphins I, I, team, I, I it's not going to be so. easy. I hope so, but I, I mean, I couldn't call it right now. Dallas 2-4, and four, and that throw uh, by Castle picked off the one. Yeah, you know, listen, I could make it sound very easy sitting in front of a mic. I know it's not when big men are chasing you and getting ready to crush you. That looked like a JV sophomore yeah. <laughs> just handling, you know, at the buzzer, just trying to make something. That was one of the worst throws of the day. Good God. Big win for the Giants. Meanwhile, how about this? Andrew Luck booed lustily in his own building. Andrew takes the snap, sets up again. He's going to throw. Pick up. The interception back there by Kyle Wilson. Wilson gets it back to the 20 and goes down there. That's the third turnover in the first half. And the Colts go to the locker room down 20 to nothing. Still two seconds left to go. The Colts are getting booed rather loudly right now. Bob Lamy, very sedate call mm. on the Colts radio network. He's going to throw picked off. Mm. Not pretty. Final score, 27-21. They actually made a game of it. The Saints jumped on, on them early. Both teams, three and four. Andrew Luck getting booed in Indy. Yeah, What's going on? God, no, I mean, the golden child. He's no longer the golden child. Here's the crazy thing, though. At three and four... Still in first place in the AFC South, and they're going to win a division. Uh, that's the AFC South for you. Their defense is just not good enough. Uh, Mark Ingram, 143 yards, rushing on the ground. Andrew Luck's trying to do so much to save his coach and his season. They're going to get to the playoffs simply because of the weakness of the division, but I don't know if Grigson is going to hang on to Chuck Pagano if they keep playing this bad. All right, so uh, it's it's the edges are a little frayed out there in Indianapolis, no doubt. Eleven touchdowns, nine picks, two fumbles. Yeah, Andrew Luck. Yikes.